Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Today we are broadcasting live from African King Studio. Uh, in our last podcast, we thought and talked and uh, discussed about yesterday, 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 everything. How yesterday keep men redundant. How yesterday kill a man. In this content, if we say man, we don't mean literally man. We mean mankind. We talk about how yesterday makes you not to move forward. Not think about tomorrow, which is an illusion. Man is now. Then after that, we discussed about fear. How fear hits a man like a tornado before the real earthquake hit him. Fear. How fear keeps a man. No movement. Fear. Fear of yesterday. Fear of something to come. Fear of unknown. Fear, fear, fear. And in the same vein, we talk about mind, possession, selfishness, greed. All these are shackles of things that put man in a circle. Mind, mind, mind. And after that, we talk about three minutes. The three minutes that keep a man backwards. After fighting, praying, fasting, walking, just little three minutes that will take you across the bridge. You chicken out. We discussed and we, we showed an illustration about our gentle men and ladies that go to the space, how they focus immensely on three minutes re-entry to this, our planet. Only three minutes that can stop a journey that cost over a trillion dollars. So today, we are lucky enough in our midst, we have a gentleman that have gone through this metamorphosis. Like I told you before, gentlemen and ladies, uh, we are not great teachers. We are not psychologists or anything. We are just inspired by this message and we are obligated to give this message. Today in our midst, we have a gentleman that have seen it all. This man started from the scratch from right from the floor, get to midway, and went all the way back to deep beyond the floor. And from there, this man refused to stop. He refused to surrender. He refused to give up. Today, I am lucky, and we are lucky. This man's story is worth telling. This man is an embodiment of success today. This man who help us put some grease to the wheel of progress of this podcast. So gentlemen, welcome on stage, Mr. Jose. Thank you, my good friend, Jose. Thank you very much. I appreciate you. Thank you very much. Thank you for being here. Oh, man, it's Thank a Thank you for your time. Thank, Thank you for your time. I appreciate you. Yeah. Thank you. Well, we've known each other for a long time. Yeah, we have. We yeah, have. we met a long time ago, like yes. probably, what, 12, 15 years ago? About 15 years ago, yeah. precisely speaking. Yeah, yes. when you were still coming up. And yes, yes, that time I still have yeah, hair. Yeah, I used to have a lot of hair. I used to have, <laughs> and I used to have all black hair. Yeah, I didn't have no gray. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, I yeah, it's been It's been years. And, um, it's been years. It's been years. But you know, the, the climate is is crazy because you know a lot of people think success is a uh is a quick overnight um attribute that you know people that are successful in this world are actually gonna become successful overnight that you guys are thinking that you know people that are millionaires and billionaires they just came up with an idea and boom yeah, it doesn't happen that way i mean you've got people like even bill gates you know greatest example bill gates took forever to come out with microsoft windows and you know he had a quick college and he went and lived back with his parents and he built his first computer the outside of the case of the computer was made of wood and it took forever to sell his idea 
And he doesn't even sell it. He actually leases it um, to uh, Dell and everybody else. Um, but even even him, even even people like, uh, let's take, for example, Donald Trump. Everybody hates Donald Trump. You know, some people love him. Some people hate him. It's just one of those things. But even someone like him, you know, you have to respect the man because in, in reality, failure is what makes you successful in this world. Amen. So Amen, bro. you have to fail and... He is a really good example. He's the president of the United States, president of the free world. Um, uh, his story is, is crazy, but at the same time is the man bankrupt and failed so many times in so many companies, so many businesses, and he became the president of the greatest nation in the world. You know, And that's, that's really something else to say about him. Even though we might not agree or like the man, you know, still he became successful in his own way. You know, when you say the last name Trump, it boom. When you say the last name Gates, boom, it pops out. Even if you say Bush, you know, Bush Jr. had a C average. You know, so many different people, you know, great generals like Colin Powell, you know, that, that were there. They, they didn't succeed at one time. You know, you had people that went to war, to battle and whatnot. Even wars were won when several battles were lost. You know, so, you know, that says a lot for uh, different ideas of growth and becoming successful in something is having to take all those little you know you yourself you know i, I remember when you started off you know and you yes. climbed up yeah, and you, yeah, you know yeah, you've yeah. done a lot for yourself man yeah yeah uh, god yeah yeah I, I think so i think god have done a lot no he's done a lot for you man I mean, <laughs> yeah, look yeah. at that mansion you have back home <laughs> <laughs> oh no <laughs> yeah, yeah. But you know, it's, you know, but uh, you know, it's, well, it's God a, is good. God yeah, God, God is great, God man. man. Yes, yeah, so it's it's beautiful to know, man. You know that for us, you know, I myself, you know, I started very young, um, and the first the first kind of attempts that I I did at making money um, took off very fast, and then all of a sudden, you know, I found out that wasn't the way to go, and I got into a lot of issues behind it, and came out of that, and I had to find another way to go, and. A lot of people don't know my story, but I actually sat in the kitchen table with $150. Um, that's all I had. I had to figure out how to pay lights, rent, water. Um, I had my son at the time, and I needed to figure out what to do. You know, there was no other way around it. You know, it's just um, I, I had to make something happen in this world. And when I went into my first business, people thought I was crazy. People just looked at me and they're like, man, there's no way. It's not going to happen. And again, uh uh, please, uh, Jose, how much did you start this almighty business with? 150 bucks. 150 bucks? Yeah. And you were not afraid of failure, were you? No, you can't, you can't really be afraid. I had a friend years ago that asked me a real simple question. You know, he asked me, what's the difference between me and um, Bill Gates? Well, at the time, Bill Gates was the richest man in the world. And I sat there and I was like, well, you know, he's the richest man. He has everything. I can't compete with him. There's no way. And he's like, no, you've got it all wrong. He said, Bill Gates and you are exactly the same. You're both men. You both dress the same way, eat the same way, probably have sex the same way, everything else. You're a man, he's a man. The difference is he woke up one day and he did whatever he had to do to become successful. So in this world, if you want to be something, you know, I have this saying that I say all the time, if you're not happy today, with what you're doing, then stop what you're doing and go do something else. Go find Thank something you that you very love to do. Much. Thank because, you very much. Yeah, there's no point. If you're working at Walmart and you hate your job, I'm not telling you to quit, but go find what your what your passion is in this world. We all have a passion. I have my passions. I have these crazy ideas, you know, and I have a lot of people, you know, that have worked for me and, and they always tell me, you know, I just, I come up with these crazy ideas and I follow them and I see them through all the way through. And it's not because I'm a, a very smart and I've had a lot of people around me that have become very successful, that have opened up businesses. I have a lot of ex-employees that run their own companies now. Um, a lot of them follow my formatting. A lot of them have the same drive. I've created animals. My sons are like that. Um, my oldest daughter, she's thriving every day, you know. Um, my other daughters that are coming out, they're the same way. You know, we, we raise them to become very positive-minded and let them understand that you're going to fail and it's okay it's how we get up it's how we wake up the next day that we become successful you know if i could lose everything and people that know me that truthfully know me know me and know my 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 life will tell you i have made millions and i've lost millions 
I have I have been so successful, you know, I've had almost any type of car you can think of, you know, crazy houses and stuff, but um, but it isn't because I'm a genius. It's because I wrap myself with people that motivate me, inspire me, and have the same drive that I have every day. You know, my whole family is that way. You know, we we look at what can we do tomorrow to better today? You know, what how can we how can we how can we be how can how can we make tomorrow better? You know, you know, because tomorrow's gonna become today. You know, sure. so that, that's why I said it that way. But you know, what are we looking at? You know, what do I need to do to achieve that next step, that next level? And make sure we have those processes in place, you know, whether you make a list. You know, there's some people that I know that literally will write down, like, this is what I want to accomplish in life, and these are my steps that I'm going to take. And, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. You know, but just know, because you fail, um, doesn't mean that you're a failure. It just means that you're taking the proper steps to become successful in this world. And that's all it means. It doesn't matter what you're going to be. If you want to get out there and you want to wash cars, just know that not every day the sun's going to be out. It's going to rain some days. It's going to snow. Just be prepared for it. You know, if it snows, man, get a snowblower. Thank you, brother. Um, please, if I uh, may digress a little. How? Do I know that I'm doing the right thing? That I'm stepping forward in the right way? Well, in a ladder of success? It's more... If you feel accomplished, and I, I say this a lot of times, um, I, I was raised Muslim. So we have this thing, you know, where we always say Alhamdulillah. And Alhamdulillah means all praises be to God. It doesn't matter whether I lose, I gain or I break even. It doesn't bother me to lose because by the grace of God, I'm allowed to lose because the next day if I gain, I know I've gained. So it doesn't, it doesn't make any sense to me to gain every day because then I don't know what it is to gain because I've never lost. So you have to experience the loss and we give grace, you know, we give thanks to, to Allah, to God, you know, subhanahu wa ta'ala that we, we gain and we give him thanks because we lose because therefore we appreciate our gains now. We have to appreciate the fact that we lose because we know that success is ahead. And when we succeed, even if we're one cent to the positive, we know that we gained a profit. You know, and if that isn't, you know, that inspired, that motivates me every day. I tell everybody, you know what guys, it's okay. We lost, I'm good with that. Thank you very much, Jose. Um, Jose, I know very well. Um, you have really gone through metamorphosis, <laughs> like, oh, yeah. if I may put it that way. Oh, yeah. Uh, you've really gone uh, through a lot. But what is success? Success to me is, um, is accomplishment, is happiness. That is true success. Being happy where you are today. Amen. Amen, brother. Thank you true. very much for that quick answer. Um, I want to ask you something else. Do failure, is failure a part of success? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. You have to, you have to fail before you can ever succeed. I mean, there's no way. Um, I have a story from, uh, there's a gentleman that I've known for a long time. Um, he had a company. It was a very successful company. And... He lost everything. His partners uh, pretty much just robbed him blind. Uh, he lost his wife, his house, um, his entire company went under. And the man had five dollars in his pocket. It's a true story. Uh, went to an advanced auto parts in Wilmington. From what I understand, he just went there and asked if he could wash the windows. Um, the guy told him he couldn't wash the windows unless he gave him a receipt. He said, "You, you can do it, but I need a receipt." So he took his last $5 and he walked about, I think it was like 30, 45 minutes there, 30, 45 minutes back, um, came back, um, had a receipt book, took his last $5, made $35, washed the windows, 35 bucks. The man was living on the streets. All he had was a rag and a little squeegee. You know, he had bought, you know, yeah, had a couple of little things they could wash windows with. And um, as soon as he was done, the manager from the store told him, hey, if you can make it to the other advanced auto parts, to wash the windows. He's like, he'll pay you too. He made $35. So he was already $30 to the good. 
$30 profit. And so he literally walked all the way across to the other store, washed the windows, made another 35 bucks, um, had enough for a hotel for that night, stayed at the hotel, woke up the next morning, and you know, he figured, hey, you know, this is pretty pretty quick money. So what he started doing, he started going to all these places and washing windows. You know, and now the man's a millionaire. He has all these um, contracts, uh, washing windows, high rises and stuff like that. He's got like some like 10 or 12 trucks. Very successful man, um, very powerful man at that. And he rebuilt himself from nothing. So uh, from what I get you uh, trying to um, let me and our audience to know is that uh, like money don't stop a man from being successful. Is that exactly. what you're trying to yeah, say? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's yeah, it's uh, not. It's not going to be. You're not. S success is not determined by how much money you have in your house or how much money you have in your car and your bank accounts and stuff like that. Amen. Success is if, if you can go and you invite and and I I post a lot of pictures on Facebook. If you guys you know can log on and check it out. I have a lot of times, lots of employees where I take all my employees out, you know, and we have dinner together. You know, we sit there and we eat together. And, you know, I, I watch them because they enjoy, you know, they enjoy the friendship. They enjoy the, they enjoy, you know, just being a part of a group. You know what I'm saying? That to me is success. So basically you say that, you know, you have to be a go-getter. Yeah, you, you yeah, definitely, definitely go-getter. But you also have to have that, that mentality where it doesn't matter what anybody says. It doesn't matter what, how crazy the idea sounds. Uh, there's a guy in Texas that all he does is paint letters and numbers in front of houses. And he makes, I think, like two, three hundred thousand dollars a year. He has the contract to Houston and Dallas. I think he may have Austin now. But that's all he does is he paints letters on the side in front of houses. Do, um, do some of our activities and life we live and um, the way we carry ourselves or comport ourselves have something to do with our oh, yeah, failure yeah. or success? Well, yeah, definitely. So one of the things that you can always tell an individual... Um, and I tell my guys all the time, you know, you have to carry a way about yourself and be proud of what you do. You know, you can watch a man that works in the field. You know, I grew up as a migrant worker. And you can watch a man that works in the field and he goes home and he's with his family and he takes his family out shopping or whatnot and he walks with his chest out. You know, when he's able to pay for his family and stuff like that, even though that man is working in the field, that man probably has his own truck, his house, you know, different stuff and his children are fed for. That is success because he is providing and he's successfully providing for his family. And for him, you know, his accomplishments in life may only be to provide a house to his family, to have another vehicle, you know, for his children to go to private schools and stuff like that. That to him is success. To other success might be where um, it might be successful to him because he helped his mother pay off his house, her house. You know, that to him is the success he was looking for. You know, uh, success could be maybe he helps somebody or he loves helping families. I know people that um, have next to nothing, but they feel successful and they feel accomplished because they're always helping the community. You know, that's, that's success to them. Success is not necessarily always financial. Success is, can also come spiritually, you know. And, I, you know, there's a lot of imams that I know in this world that, you know, they live in little little apartments have little little cars driving to the you know to the mosque and you know but to them that's successful because they've accomplished their dreams do um thank you very much jose i'm uh, in fact i'm i'm really enjoying you i'm learning a lot from you yeah, though i've been doing podcasts uh, in line of this but i'm really enjoying your point uh, because thanks. you've been there you have practiced it and yeah. you're there yeah. so um is there a way some negative activities impact our success um yeah, negative. There's there's always negative activities. I mean, if you have people that are constantly bringing you down, breaking you down, um, you always have people that are going to be shooting really uh, negative notions towards you and whatnot. Just know to walk away from it. You know, just know to stay away from uh, things that you're always going to have bad days. You're always going to have days that you lose, but you have to keep that that mentality of, of staying focused. And I'm not telling you every day I wake up. And I'm 100% ready to go. I'm not, what's his name, Joe Osteen. I'm, I'm not out here, you know, smiling every day and stuff. I mean, we all have our bad days. We all have our losses and we have to, but it's just, you know, we have to get up from those ideas. You know, we have to get up, we have to be able to get up from the floor and get up to the next step. 
you know, there's a lot of times that I've sat there and there's times where there's 150, 200,000 in the accounts and then the following week there's less than $5, you know, but that's just, and, and I can't go, oh my God, I've lost everything and I'm, I'm completely going to go under. I literally just wake up the next day and I tell whoever's with me like, hey, we got to go do something. Let's, let's get it, you know, let's, let's, let's get some stuff going. Let's see what we can accomplish today. Thank you, brother. Um, is there any time late to start? No, absolutely not. Thank you, brother. Yeah, man. you can start at any given time. It doesn't matter, man. I, uh, I saw this thing not so long, uh, a couple years ago. There was a little girl uh, that started a lemonade stand. I mean, she was about seven or eight years old. I mean, seven, eight years old starting a business. You know, then um, not too long, you know, there was a gentleman... Uh, he's what, like 80 something years old and he still mows lawns and stuff. You know what I mean? But that's his little business and whatnot. Um, my father always said, you know, to be successful, you know, it's an everyday thing. Every day. You know, you, you don't, it, there's no age to it. When we feel we are successful, is there any time, I don't mean retirement, is there any time for us to relax and say we are successful today so uh, I don't need to work no more? Oh, absolutely not. Um, I, my, my belief is, you know, there's a lot of people said, oh man, I can't wait till I make my first million, uh, seven, 10 million, whatever. Well, I'm gonna tell you what, I've made several million, you know, and I still can't retire. Um, and I'm not going to, I'm a workaholic. You know, I, I, I think that the more, the more that you're able to put yourself out there, you know, the more that you can help out people, the more you can do and whatnot. So I, I personally believe that success doesn't stop you know, because you've made a million, $10 million or whatever, now you can retire. You still, eventually, then you're gonna run out of that. You know, you're gonna have to look for another way. You're gonna have to find some other, you know, method to fill that void, you know? And that's the way I am. I, I, I truthfully believe it's an every day, every single um, day you wake up, you have to continuously do. You know, it might be, not be a financial thing, it might be a spiritual thing, you know, to continue to become successful at something else, you know? Um, gentlemen and ladies, thank you very much. Um, we will still talk to uh, Jose, but uh, the point we have gathered so far, Jose have made us understand that money cannot stop us from being successful. Fear cannot stop us. Age cannot stop us. And nothing can stop us but ourselves. Nothing stops us. Man, what is the best time to start? Now. Because man is now. Yesterday is over. Tomorrow is not existing. We are now. And the best time to start is now. Well, gentlemen and ladies, I have, a, I have a, one more question for our Honorable uh, Mr. Jose, he's been a blessing. In fact, um, he has touched it all. He has told you how he started. So myself, I think um, I'm just running my mouth. But this is a man that has been there, he has been on the floor, get to meet A, get back to floor, get up again, get to meet A, and now he is successful. Yes. And I have authority to say that because I know him. I know him inside out. Now, like he said, nothing stops you but yourself. No time is late to start. Your age doesn't stop you. Your money doesn't stop you. But be ready. Do not be afraid of failure. Do not be afraid to fall. Do not be afraid to hear no. Go to your bank. Talk to the manager. Wear your bathroom slippers. It doesn't matter be who you are. Walk into that bank. Sit down and tell that bank manager, hey, sir, I want to tell you about my ideas, but I need so, so money. Do not be afraid this man telling you no. It's okay. Any no you get in life is part of lesson. Without no, there won't be years. Without darkness, there won't be light. Without up, there won't be down. Without black, there won't be white. If, if there must something to compare something. And you, you, God have made us up. 
we are made in his image. And what is the image of this almighty God? This man is omnipotent, omniscient, and omnipresent. And he made us on his, with his image. Which means we can all create. We are all creators. We can create the way our father created. If our father wants to babysit us today, like we've been saying, he will not give us eyes. He will not give us intelligent quotient to think. He will not make, give us smell, legs to walk. So I don't think it's an intention of this Almighty to babysit us. So he has given us all. The only, the only thing keeping us one place is ourselves. Because we are afraid of what happened yesterday, what happened yesterday, my this, my ex, my that, my that, and you put this in front of you today. When yesterday, the, no figment of time yesterday could be retrieved. Yesterday is over. It's gone. You cannot hold anything back from yesterday. It's, not it's no more there. Today, this is to 7 o'clock now. Um, is that 8 or 10th of... Today is what? Um, somebody remind me. 11, 11. Today is 11th of June. July. July uh, 2020. So as the case may be, 10th of July, 11. 20, no, 10th of July, 2020, nobody here will see it again. Yeah. It's over, no matter what you do. And there's something we don't understand. You can put your drink in the refrigerator. You can put your wine in a refrigerator. You can put food in a refrigerator. You can put everything you have and retrieve it and use it. But you cannot put your time in a refrigerator. You cannot wind your clock back. We are now, and we are being circled with the earth, running its own orbit. It does not wait for us. Rain does not stop because of me. Sun will not stop to shine because of me. But I have to find a way to walk in the sun. I have to find a way to use my umbrella during the rain. I have to find a way to make a move. I have to find a way to wake up from that bed and think positively and move towards what I'm thinking about. I have to make a move, and I have to raise that foot, that baby foot. Take that step today. Take it. Do not be afraid what happens is secondary. Whatever that happens when you take a step of success is a lesson. And each time you have a lesson, you are closer to success. But remember, do not ever, ever give up. One more last question to my gentleman. Well, well you know there's a story... Yeah. That's really cool that I, I've always enjoyed. And uh, my mother used to tell me this story when I was little. And it's a church story. Yeah. It's of the three brothers. So there was three brothers that were given money. Um, we'll just say that each one of them got $1,000. Yeah. So the first brother um, took his money and blew it. You know, just went, spent all his money. The second brother went and took his money and he buried it. You know, because he didn't want anybody to steal his money, he just buried it. Yeah. <laughs> the third brother went out and actually bought seed, planted a field, got the food, planted more seed, sowed that. You know, he made his money work for him. And basically, you know, the story, the moral of the story is, if you don't get out there and actually use what you have to become successful, you're not going to become successful. You know, people always have a drive too. For instance, um. I told Jax the other day, you know, that us becoming successful is not necessarily for us to have money, to have cars, to have houses, this and that. It's to leave a legacy. It's to leave something for our children, to leave something for our family. You know, one of the most proudest things that I can say, um, whether you're a minority or whatever, you know, it's, it's, it, we are and have always been very tight-knit families. A lot of the foreigners that come into this country always come in very tight tight fit with their families you know we have always come from that and one of the big inspirations in life is family and to wake up every day and to know that you're creating something becoming successful not for yourself but for your family for your children for your mother for your father that should drive you every single day to wake up and say you know what i'm going to make sure that my son my daughter my mother my grandparents my uncles my aunts I'm going to make sure that if anything ever happens to anyone, that I can be the one that they can come to. 
Amen. And you know, and that's that's you know, I, I think that beyond is is very successful because knowing that you can take that hit, knowing that you can provide for your family, knowing that you can, you know, some people like me, you know, uh, knowing that you can write a check to your mother, you know, and say here, and you don't ever have to give me that is a, a big success. You don't have to be a millionaire to do that. You can make you know a hundred dollars a week or two hundred dollars a week and then you take twenty five dollars and you give twenty five dollars to mother you become successful with that that is a form of success you've achieved something that you've always wanted to achieve you know and that's and that's what achieve uh, you know success to me is is be uh, uh, is achieving the achievable that you can thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you my brother my friend my uh i man you you've made my day now, um, brothers and sisters, um, you have heard from the horse's mouth. I don't think. Yeah. Uh, yeah, come on, please. Ask your question. Ask your question to Mr. Please. Hi, Mom. <laughs> I, have a, I have a question. Okay, um, like, okay, people want to be successful in the music business. Yeah. Guy, he has nothing his whole life, right? Yeah. He gets a record deal, they give him X amount, let's just say uh, 1.5. Okay. I got this a two part question. Now, first question is how does the taxes work on that? And how do people get caught up on this tax evasion situation? Do they give them the money up front and count on them to take care of their taxes? Yeah, no, so the okay, so it's so true. So I used to own a label years ago and um, one of the things that you have to remember is in the music industry, I don't care what anybody says, you know, you're not gonna be an instant marriage. Basically it's a loan. You're gonna catch it as a loan and people think because you get all this money that now it's your money. And, and taxes and everything, you're gonna avoid them? Absolutely not. Uncle Sam is always gonna get his cut, number one. Number two is that that is actually working capital. It's not your personal money. It's capital that needs to be put to work. And if you don't put the capital to work the way it's supposed to, and the label comes calling, guess what? You're gonna be like MC Hammer. You know we saying? know what happened to him. Yeah, MC Hammer lost everything. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot of artists, there's a lot of one hit wonders. A lot of people go, oh man, if I just get my big break, well, if you go back to it, there's more one-hit wonders in the music industry and films and everything else than anything else. And, you know, you don't want to be a one-hit wonder. You don't want to be a one-hit wonder. And when you're going... Is this a, you turn it off. Uh, now you're oh, sorry. So if you don't want to be a one-hit wonder, then you need to make sure that you, you look up what you're... You know, look into the industry. You know, have a business plan. Have an idea of where you're going, what you're doing. Business don't, plan. Yeah, don't sit there and think that just because you made it to a certain point. Let me tell you something. We, we manage hundreds of thousands of dollars come through my accounts. Millions come through in a year. And honestly, at the end of the day, I have to continuously have money running through them. So I can't just, you know, say we do one massive project. You know, and I've had million dollar projects and we do one massive project and I'm like, oh, yeah, we made a million dollars. I don't got to do anything else. Man, there's material, there's machinery, there's payroll, you know, overhead. And you still got all your overhead. You still got accountants to pay, attorneys to pay. You still got all your insurances, general liability, workman's comp. You know what I'm saying? That that million dollars is going to be gone like within about 45 days. One more question. Just the second part. Yeah. Now, the second part to that question is, okay, with the money that they have after they responsibly take care of their taxes, do you think it's wise for them to be buying all those gold uh, chains and diamond teeth well, let me, let me tell you cars? Let me tell you a secret of that. A lot of artists, now I own all of mine, you know. <laughs> Rightfully so. Yeah, right, right. So, <laughs> but I will tell you this. I've known a lot of, I, I've met a lot of people that are in the industry. And half that stuff they got, 75% of it, is rented. Wow. Or what they do is the jewelry company comes out, and they'll bring it to them, and they'll wear it. But then as soon as it's over, oh, that thing comes right off their neck. So don't be fooled into spending all your money thinking yeah. these guys are buying this stuff. It's trickery to trick you out of your wealth. Yeah. yeah so, I mean, look, anything that is anything right now, so... When you go into the music business, automatically you're going to have all these people that are going to come out of nowhere. <laughs> Everybody's going to want you to spend money with this, spend money with that. Everybody's going to tell you, "Thank you, Jose." Oh yeah, you got to you got to start wearing all the high-end clothes and you got to start doing this. It's not necessarily true. You have artists out there, and I'll give you a good example. There's a guy um everybody knows who the artist Keanu Reeves is. Keanu Reeves is has made millions hundreds of millions of dollars 
Y'all you know who I'm talking about, right? Yeah, the, the actor. So hundreds of millions of dollars. But he doesn't live like some of those people out there that are, you know, with all the, the high-end clothing and the big mansions and this and that. The guy has one of the most simplest lives. He donated uh, the Matrix uh, Reloader or something like that. All his money, all the profits went back to the cast. He didn't take a penny from it. You know what I'm saying? Because he didn't need it. He gave it back to the community. You have people like the game that are out there. You have people, the game went out there and actually paid people's rent. You know what I'm saying? It's just it, using your money, you become successful by having the same people that support you. You turn around and you support them. Always give back to the community. That's really important. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, my good friend. Thank you very much. Now, uh, we have heard it all. Is there anything stopping us? Is there any other thing we can ask that is stopping us? Money cannot stop us. Oh, I don't have money. I could have. Uh, we have heard it. It can stop us. Oh, I'm too old to start this school. I'm too old to start this business. That cannot stop us either. Oh, man, I'm struggling so much. How can these people, uh, the banks won't look at me. I don't have money. That can stop us. How do we do what now? Come on, come on in, come on in, come on in. <laughs> What's your question, sir? How do you handle your competitors? Well, competitors, so that's actually pretty easy. So uh, anything that you do is a competition, you know. So you've got Nike, Reebok, Adidas, um, Old Kai. You've got all the Italian lines and everything like that. You have to have a unique something unique about you you know like for instance one of the companies that we own we're unique because we're turnkey we're able to provide almost any service under the sun you know and that's one of the reasons that makes us unique you know you have to have a uniqueness about you that you can provide something to other people and, yeah so there might be another company that's just like yours you know that might be competing with you but at the end of the day you're not necessarily selling your company you're selling yourself and that's what's really a lot of people have the misconception on. You, when you're successful, you're not selling the idea. Like Trump Towers doesn't sell Trump Towers itself. Trump doesn't sell that. Trump sells himself because he is a, you know, you see him broad shoulder, standing up tall and whatnot. You know, he, he gives you the idea and you believe him because you believe in him. And that's basically how you take and, your uh, competitors. Yeah, I've given you the uh, whole thing, practicality. But myself, I will tell you again, do not ever waste your time looking back to competition keep moving exactly do not look back and say oh he's coming too close otherwise he will go past you <laughs> but keep on that <laughs> your yeah, pace. That's true. when you're running and you're busy watching at your competitors <laughs> they tend to you tend to miss that fight yeah. the fight is not won in the stage it's won in the practice room when you see michael tassin he come, he knock out somebody in three minutes. He have worked in gym for 10 hours. Yeah. Forgot his wife, his children, everybody. You call him, come take your breakfast. He say, I'll, be, I'll do that later. But when he go to the fighting ring, only three seconds, it's over. People say, hey, no. He won. In every game, there's pain. Do not keep looking back at your competitors. So basically that, you say you have to work hard for it. You got to yeah. work hard and move forward. Do yeah. not waste your time at all watching our computers. Yeah. Be unique. Don't look back. Move forward. And don't be afraid. You know, because I've be had successful. Yeah, because I've had I've had uh, I will tell you this, I've had people that compete with me every day and I have um, companies that started about the same time I did and I do five, six times more money than them. I've had people come into my business. I still compete with multi-million dollar companies every day in what I do. And I'm talking about companies that are worth 100 million, 200 million. And I'm going to tell you, when they say my name, and they know they go to the same job site that Jose Plata's been at, they know they're not getting the job. Yeah. They already know. If Jose's been there, you're not getting the job. They'll walk right off and they're like, no, I'm good. I'm good. Yeah, good. Yeah, Jose's a really good guy. He'll take care of Because he knows that at the end of the day, I am a competitor. I'm going to compete. I'm going to make sure, because this is the way I see it. I have to feed my family. I have bills to pay. I have employees. I have their children, their bills, everything that need to be paid. And there is no way in hell, you know, even if I have 
multi-million dollar companies competing against me, I'm going to make sure that I make, and I'll make a $25, $30 profit. Okay, okay. So what I got from this is be unique and never look back at yes. your competitors, right? Yeah. Don't, don't waste your time thinking about what other person Yeah, don't, don't set okay, yourself okay. up like everybody else. Yeah. Make yourself different. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. You're yeah. welcome. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Jose. I can't thank you enough. Um, today, uh, we have learned a lot. Next, in our next segment, we are going to handle um, frequency. Um, like we all of us know, we human beings, we are like radio. We talk about short wave, medium wave, and frequency modulation, which is FM. Everybody is in their own frequency. You don't want to be a good mechanic, be hanging out with uh, a carpenter every day. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, you don't have to be a good musician. And every day, you waste your time thinking about something else. Whatever you want to do is now. We will continue this um, podcast uh, in our next segment. Thank you for listening. Uh, thank you, our audience. Uh, please, I, I want to use this opportunity to say a uh, shout-out to um, uh, um, Juan... Kwan, you, uh, you said you're from Guerrero. Uh, I appreciate your right, and I appreciate what you said. Thank you very much. And uh, the, one more person, please. Um, from Connecticut, um, uh, Maureen, Maureen. Maureen, you said uh, from Connecticut. I'm, I don't have my paper here. You wrote us. You said that uh, we have made your life that I don't know how we did it. It's God. But so I thank you very much. Keep watching and uh, let's go. We just started. We are not teachers. We are not educated. But uh, by the grace of God, if you listen and we listen to each other together, we will yeah. move forward. Thank you very much. And thank you, my good friend, oh, thank you. Jose. You have made it <laughs> possible. Thank you very much. Yeah, thanks. So, you thank know, you, I can thank say you, it's, thank I just. You. You don't like thank what you're you. doing today? Yeah. Change it. Thank you. If you don't like what you're doing, you hear that? Just change it. Uh, our thanks go to uh, African King, uh, who uh, we are producing from his uh, studio. Yeah. Uh, we thank everybody, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. And uh, uh, we are short of time, and uh, we will continue this podcast next time. Thank you very much, and thank you for listening. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>